Hey, how's it going? This is Helmi from Balcony Hijau. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the smart lock that I installed in my uh, newly renovated studio apartment. So in this video, we're going to go through why I decided to install a smart lock in the first place and also the real pros and cons from a perspective of an actual owner. All right, so here we go. I gotta be honest, nobody really needs a smart lock. The only reason I got it, just because it looks cool. So for my particular model, I chose one of the cheapest one available. Uh, the brand is called Nova Lock. I don't think it's a well-known brand. It's probably a knockoff brand from China, but it seems to be working quite okay for me and my budget. So far, I'm pretty happy. So the smart lock operates with four AAA batteries and the batteries are located here. So there's a small screw here that I can unscrew to replace the batteries. I'm going to show you that right now. So there you go. So there's the uh, four AAA batteries. This is the inside of the lock and this is on the outside of the door. By default, it's always locked. If you can see when I push this handle on the outside, this thing doesn't go in. However, if I do the same on the inside, it will open the door. Okay, so this is the main lock. So once you close the door, it will automatically lock. Nobody from the outside can come in, as you can see from this handle. So that lock is good enough already for most people. But if you want to have extra lock, what you can do is you can twist this handle upwards, either from the outside or the inside. So let me show you what I'm talking about. See, that thing activates. It's locked, but anything from the inside can unlock the door. Unlock. Again, I can also activate the main lock from the inside as well. So this by default is always locked. If I want to activate the main lock and extra lock, I just push up. So that activates the additional lock down there. So if I want to unlock the door, pretty simple. Now let's take a look how to open the door once it's locked. We're on the outside right now, the door is closed, it's automatically locked. I just activated the, the main lock. So to use the keypad, the first thing I gotta do is just touch this part right here. The keypad will light up and then I'll key in my eight digit uh, key followed by the hash key. So the second method is using one of these smart lock. Okay, again, the door is locked. All I have to do is use the smart lock and tap here. So that's the second method. Bonus tip, because the smart tag is using RFID technology, the Malaysian MyCut also has an RFID uh, technology inside as well. So if you program your IC to open the door lock using the app, you can use your IC to unlock the door as well. Some models will have a fingerprint scanner. So this particular model does not come with a fingerprint scanner because I don't really care about that feature and I want to save a little bit of money. But for those that does have a fingerprint scanner, it would be somewhere around here. So that's gonna be another option for you uh, to unlock your door. And now we're gonna use my phone. Uh, it's called door app, door guard. I'm gonna turn on my Bluetooth. I'm just gonna click on unlock. Pretty cool. So just in case if the battery dies or any of the app or digital feature fails, you still have a physical keyhole down here that you can use uh, the backup key as an emergency way to unlock your door. So here's the key. It's open. Okay, so the pros and cons of the smart lock. So the pros, from all the methods that I show you how to unlock the smart lock, uh, using the smart tag is my favorite method and it makes my day-to-day -day life going in and out of my own apartment uh, very easy especially if I just got home uh, carrying a lot of stuff from the grocery store now the cons um, a traditional key lock has one vulnerability which is somebody can pick the lock for the smart lock it actually has 
the same vulnerability, which is the traditional key backup. Somebody can hack that. And apart from that, because this thing connects to an app via Bluetooth, so you have a possibility of somebody hacking that app and also the Bluetooth connection as well. So that's another vulnerability. And also for the smart tag as well, I'm not entirely sure how it completely works, but if somebody can clone your smart tag or something like that, then maybe uh, they have a, a duplicate key to your apartment. So in my opinion, this will depend on your situation. For me, I live in a pretty safe apartment. The pros outweigh the cons, which is why I got this in the first place. The second cons is I feel like this particular Nova Lock smart lock has a design flaw where the battery is located beneath here, but there's a gap between the battery and uh, the back plate of this plastic. So there's a bit of wiggle room. So what happened was one of the days I left the door open and then the wind slammed this door shut. So the impact of that shot dislodged the batteries from the socket. It was still inside here, but it dis uh, dislodged the, the connection there. So there was no battery running. And then I went out and go about my day. And then when I returned home, I, I discovered that the smart lock is completely off. It's like no power. I can't use the smart tag, uh, the app, none of that. None of the digital methods work because there was no power. Uh, luckily, I had the spare key with me, so I, I had to, on the other side, had to use the, the key on the bottom to enter my door. So I think this is a design flaw that the engineering department kind of overlooked, but it's an easy fix. Take a thick piece of paper that I found somewhere in my home, and I need to wedge that in between this the, the gap there. So let's let me show you how what I did. So now I took the back plate off, uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of gap between the battery and the back plate of this plastic. So the impact shoved these batteries out of the socket, which is what we don't want to do. So I'm going to insert the cardboard there and just going to wedge everything right there and then screw everything back together. Now that's a snug fit. So if you're interested to get a smart lock, the reality is most of the time you don't need all the features. So what you can do instead is just pick the smart lock with the feature that you want. So for example, in my case, I'm okay to take a smart lock model that does not have a fingerprint scanner, as long as I can save a little bit of money. I also think this is very beneficial for somebody who is running an Airbnb business. So if you are an Airbnb host, maybe the smart app that connects via Bluetooth might not be beneficial to you because then you have to be close to the door in order to unlock it. So what you can do instead is upgrade to a model that connects via Wi-Fi instead of Bluetooth. If this thing is connected via Wi-Fi, you can unlock the door anywhere you are in the world as long as you have a internet connection on your mobile phone. But for me, uh, this is just my studio home and the only feature that I care of is that it looks cool and I can go in my house using a smart tag. So I got one of the cheapest models that is available on Shopee Malaysia. So I'll leave the link in the description below. So I hope this has been helpful. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.